Say something to the people, Whitney. No. I think we're really far into the sofa. Come on, give it a try. I married a 29-year-old man. It's so cool, though. Watch, Whitney, watch. <laughs> what we are about to unbox in this episode. James, play the T-Rex from Super Nintendo uh, game. <laughs> what we're about to see in this video is something that I didn't think would ever really be made again because it has already been made a long time ago, back in 1993 it was, or two ago, oh, when the first movie was released, that one. For whatever reason, there must have been enough demand that Mattel were like, you know what, we'll give the people what they want. And for the first time ever, it pretty much was what we wanted. Presenting the toy we've always wanted, the beautiful assistant. Gibby. There we go. And here it is. <laughs> Look at the gorgeousness that is this machine. Tyrannosaurus Rex Flutch Set. We're not interested in the T-Rex here. We've seen that we've seen this T-Rex a friggin' million times before. We don't need to see it anymore. Two amazing things that really we've only ever had one of each. And that is the Ford Explorer and so we have a look at the box you can see at the back you've got a little illustration there of the t-rex it shows the t-rex sort of through the roof which is um something that is completely new for this one so without further ado how about we open her up shall we <laughs> so here you go in the rain let me if we just look t-rex t-rex roberta i think she was called never had a tail um but oh Oh, that is, oh, that is. Smell it. Smell it? Ugh, I'd never smell it in a million. <laughs> anyway, Tim Murphy with the night vision goggles. Probably the only thing I'll say, well, we'll see when we get into it, that could be changed is the night vision goggles. As you can see, they're, they're yellow and. Whitney, grab the goggles. No one cares about a bit of dust. Hey, look, it's the thing I, I almost bought before Chronicle Collectibles went out of business and screwed everybody over. <laughs> I taste good! Anyway, here they are. The, well, obviously not screen used. Uh, these are prop replicas. The night vision goggles uh, made by a secret private party who wants to be named nameless. Who wants to remain nameless? That's the one. Chronicle Collectibles was going around issuing cease and desist to everybody who was making props um, for them to go out of business and rip a lot of people off. Good job! So, as you can see, there's a bit of a difference between Tim, Tim Murphy's night vision goggles and these ones. Uh, the biggest difference there, and you can zoom in onto the box and Tim Murphy there, because they're pretty much the same, even though it's a render. Um, they're green, they're yellow, but they're kind of missing the black of the lenses. And when you look at the rest of this, you know, this playset, they could have easily just done like a tiny bit more paint on it. So let's get this out of the packaging, shall we? Stop making us have to buy T-Rexes, Mattel. Damn it, we've already got them. Whitney, close up for the foot if people want the 25th T-Rex. Well, you know what? I'm, I'm kind of happy just leaving the tail in because I, quite frankly, dear, I do not give a damn about the tail. Come here, you. I've read your book. Ah, there he is. Oh my God. It's beautiful. Go away, T-Rex. This is it. This is what we want. Just the underside has got so much detail on it. They've even put the spare tire that the Ford Explorers have on them. That's so good. I love that. I love that. Basically, when it came to this this car, this car right here, the, the Ford Explorer, there was a lot of issues with Ford actually licensing. So even if you notice in Jurassic World Evolution, the cars that are in that aren't Ford Explorers. They're like knockoff versions. And you'll notice in the Jurassic Park Pinball as well that there was some game, Pinmaster, whatever did that. The Explorers that are on the menus aren't Ford Explorers because they couldn't get the license. However, if you look at this guy, you turn it around, it has the insignia. It actually has the Ford logo. And on the opposite side, it has 
the Explorer XLT, which is precisely what it was. You've got a lovely gradient there. The Jurassic Park isn't exactly... I mean, um, we're getting nitpicky here. If you were to look at this and look at a glance, you'd be like, that's it. That's the car. But if you were to be a bit, you know, that kind of person, you could say that the Jurassic Park logos on the side are a little bit small and far apart. <laughs> You could say that the wind wipers aren't black for whatever reason. They've just decided to keep them all, you know, green. The vents on the back of this extra bit on top of the roof should be black when it's actually see-through. But, you know, we're just, uh, just little things here. We don't really care about it. But if we get the T-Rex and we put him through the roof and you can recreate that scene from the freaking movie. How cool is that? Actually, I'm looking and I'm already put scratches on that roof from that t-rex and uh oh that's not very good now is it <laughs> there's already like two scratches on the on the front of the plastic ah it's gonna i mean it's gonna happen isn't it but the ps de la resistance when it comes to stuff like this we have friggin opening doors <laughs> should have put locking mechanisms on the vehicle doors look at that they've even put if you have a look at the inside of the doors Yes, it's not painted or anything like that, but the detail is there. They've even put as if, you know, there's door handles there. The wing mirror is actually on the car. They, you know, it's, it's little little things like that I didn't have to do. The interior is kind of half height seats and the man of the hour. Friggin' Tim Murphy in his baby blue shirt and shorts and everything else. Look at that sculpt. Look at that sculpt. Does it look amazing, Whitney? He's wearing like similar colors to what Alan Grant was wearing. Lovely little bit of character uh, wardrobe design there. Uh, the, I mean, the sculpt on it is friggin' that. That's. I mean, you couldn't get more accurate. But I mean, for a, you've got a kid, a, a smaller character, you think maybe they couldn't get that much detail on it or articulation. But no. I mean, with the arm, you don't have the elbow articulation, which is fair enough. But he, the leg, you actually do. You can actually bend the legs and the knees, which is pretty sweet. Like, just for something that's this small, they, they managed to get that level of detail in there. And the shirt itself is made from a different material. So it kind of, like, opens up as if it's a real shirt. That's... Wow. He's got, like, little blushes. He's like a little baby. He's got blushes on his cheeks. Good question, Winnie. Can he go in the car? He can freaking drive the car. That's right. Tim Murphy can. He can do anything. There he is. He's all ready. Look at him go. No, you need to sit up a little bit, Tim. You need to keep your eyes on the road, Tim. He looks amazing, doesn't he? Can I do a kickflip? Yeah, nice. Oh, that's right, Tim. You should be used to that. There you go. That feels more natural, doesn't it? Watch out, Tim. You need to get down the tree. Why are we still here? 1993 Ford Explorer. Yeah, they must have got some official documents to actually say 1993 Ford Explorer on this. Spring mechanism, if you look at the back here, when I tilt the uh, the glass, there's a little spring there. It seems pretty durable. Yeah, that'll last you. Yes, that thing that runs along the side. There's another little feature that could easily be missed on, you know, just anybody making this toy. Yeah, there you go. Just like in the movie! And the, the car runs off with them. It's like, ah, my jaw! The size comparison is great. Like, you can imagine the T-Rex putting its head <laughs> down there. Yeah, that's, that's perfect. That's, that's really good to scale. And you know what? Even though it is another T-Rex, it's not too bad. I would have preferred if it was like really dark brown like a, almost a black that would have looked sweet i mean if you if you look at the scene the t-rex is so dark and to sort of reflect that it would be nice to have maybe a, a black t-rex i don't know it would just be it's so, it's something different some rather than this kind of like beigey color that we've got i mean if we compare it to you know the original <laughs> color t-rex it yes yeah, is a little bit muted just don't touch the expensive night vision goggles or the steering wheel so when talking <laughs> When talking about this absolute beauty, there's something that we also need to talk about, and that is the previous one. And here it is, the Jungle Explorer by Kenner. You can't fault this art, it's action. It shows the characters that you can buy, you know, in the other sets. There's a T-Rex chomping on the grill there. And on the back, I should say this way, you've got, you know, an action scene like a diorama with the T-Rex that you saw on the, the previous illustration. It's just, oh, it's everything about it's like, oh, that's the car, but with a twist. This is a collector's thing, yeah. I've even got the original instructions. <laughs> so 
So here you are. This is what it looks like base. But uh, we kind of need to get the grill and all the other equipment out. You've got the camera. Something that I think this was only in the concept. Now, this could be because this toy went into uh, production around about the same time that, um, or, you know, when the concept art was out for the movie, not when the movie was made. So, in the concept art for the Explorer, it had one of these. It looks like a regular Explorer. I mean, when you compare it to this one, from the outside, it's obvious that Mattel takes the cake when it comes to screen accuracy. For a start, like, the logo is wrong. Unlike the new one, the old one cannot open its doors. They're completely solid, whereas this guy can open the doors. And that, it's a level of detail that you just can't match, really. Yes, this is completely, you know, screen accurate. It looks really good. I still think it can't compare with this one, the old Kenner one. And I'll show you why. So, you have a look at the back. It's got this weird little door going on. So, what do you do? That's right. You grab it and you can turn it upside down. But why would you turn it upside down? That's because you would stick a freaking gun on it. You've got your missiles. These are the DNA missiles that you would put on the side of the Explorer. The way this kind of worked was they didn't want to make it too aggressive, too let's shoot everything, kill the dinosaurs, bam, 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 sort of thing. It was all about capturing the dinosaurs. So instead of this being like a huge freaking rocket launcher, it was a DNA sample dart collector. So what you would do, as you can see, if you look here at the DNA darts themselves, there's nothing here. This is an empty bit and it looks hollow. So what you do is you put that inside the launcher, you fire it, there you go. And now, if you look at the DNA dot, it's got the red DNA in it. As if it hit the dinosaurs and you got the sample. So what do you do? You put it back into this launcher. Oh, sorry, into the, you know, to collect it. And when it goes in, it's taken the DNA, ready for the dart to be used again. And that, no matter what level of screen accuracy we can get to, like something like this, which is pretty much almost 100% screen accurate, and down to the interior, down to the two monitors that are actually in there, they're not painted, but they are molded, doesn't compare to what it is in the end. And that is... You know, you want to play it like a tour vehicle, like it is in the movie. You put that away, you can take the darts off, you're ready to go. So, you might be thinking, well, how did you get you know, people in there? Well, you would lift up the thing. Instead of having the T-Rex kind of put its head in and almost get halfway there, with this guy, you could get the whole T-Rex head in there. Well, you pretty much can. And not only did you have this blend between childlike creativity and screen accuracy to do with the DNA sampler, a little bit of action there. So let's say the T-Rex just bumps into the front of it and BAM! takes off the engine. I mean, you could have it wrecked. You could have a wrecked version, you know? So, I mean, they thought about everything. Maybe he just wants to have this as a completely separate thing and just used as, right, we're gonna be researching on a dinosaur island. We need to collect the DNA samples. Well, frigate, just pull out the back of the door, load up the darts and you're ready to go. When it comes down to it, You've got these two amazing Jurassic Park explorers. You've got the old one that was just a blend of like 90s kids toys, which was like, yes, we'll take something from the movie, put our own spin on it. We'll put this huge cannon that shoots at dinosaurs. It really felt like the team had sort of thought about what a kid would want to do. And maybe a bit like me, they're like, well, I'll do it with you. Let's just add this whole other thing to it. And kids can use their imagination. You know, maybe maybe they're inside the car and they can, they're using the camera to look about and to track down dinosaurs. And then, you know, it's, they can't get out of the car because they'll be attacked. So then they use this hatch to quickly nip out, you know, turn the car, shoot the thing, get the DNA and bugger off out of there. Something like that. And now you've got Mattel's, which I know in comparison from how I've sold this old Kenneg. It's it's kind of nostalgia. It's not. I didn't really have this growing up. And even now, I, I can acknowledge and appreciate the amount of effort and sheer joy that this car can deliver to a child or anybody, really. Even my, even me, a grown man child. They have thought, right, okay, kids are going to, and they've sold the T-Rex with it. So they're going to be like, okay, how are kids going to play with it? And they're going to try and get those characters in there and everything. You know, they're going to have a great time with it. But you might think we've ended it there. And that could be everything that James can say about the Explorer, because really this is amazing piece. There's one more thing we can compare it to, 
and it's not a toy. Do you know what this means? If only there was a real explorer that we could just jump into. What am I saying? We can just jump into this one. Whee! And here we are in the closest thing that we can get to the actual screen used for the explorer. That's right. Oh fuck, baby! And a million cars coming! Run! <laughs> So what better way to compare the Mattel Explorer, the Toy Explorer, to the real thing? Let's take a look. So how about we look at the back of the vehicle? So as you can see, yeah, I'd say that looks quite screen accurate. Well, of course, this isn't the screen accurate one. This is one that I had done two years later since Frontier Expo, which is uh, quite some time. And since then, we, we've had a couple of changes made to the vehicle. How about we go over those quickly? So we had the screen accurate uh, rear guards put on. These were found from an old NASA Explorer. Uh, take them off, put them on, and then sort of sell the other Explorer for scrap. I felt really bad doing that. The biggest change that we've had done to it, or modification made to it, is one of the hardest. And this is a complete custom custom prop roof. This was lovingly done by a company down south. They cast it, painted it, set it up, and it looks beautiful. So comparing it to the Mattel, um, it looks really screen accurate. This one um, from Kenner, yeah, leaves a little bit to be desired, doesn't it? So I think in that round, definitely Mattel wins that hands down. There isn't really a competition there. And as well as the rear bumpers, we had the front bumpers from that same Explorer put on with the correct lights and everything. They uh, actually aren't hooked up at the moment. And uh, yeah, ignore this as uh, Winnie's lovingly donated her coat to hide the license plate. One gripe I have about the, uh, the Mattel Explorer is the actual side. Jurassic Park that you see here. This is as accurate as it could get to the one in the movie. And if you would compare it to the Mattel one, I don't know what they did there. I think obviously this is just what worked better instead of having this weird overlap, which I think the explorers in the movie also had. Lose a little bit of points there, but it looks perfect. Just a little bit different. How about we move on to the inside of the car, right? Eh, and see what- Oh, oh yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> you do. Go on a safari. <laughs> We've looked at the outside. Let's have a look at the interior, shall we? Inside the Explorer. We're back in the car again. This has been a whole complete custom dashboard made here. Everything you see here, this is all custom. Uh, some people might be thinking, oh, well, how do you drive this? Well, what happens next will most likely shock you. We don't have any dials, as you can see, we've got the screen accurate cameras right here. Uh, you'll notice we have a keyboard there, and we'll get to that in a second. But here, if we look down, there's where we dials are! Woo! There you go. That's how I check how fast I go. And not only that, but you've also, if you look down there, we, that's the computer. Of course, when it came to these consoles uh, for Jurassic Park, the prop department just got a lot of different CD drives and computer parts to create this. As well as if you needed to call, you know, home base, visitor, center, whatever you want to do there, you have this microphone which would allow you to speak to the people in control. Also, we have a camera at the top right there, so you can see yourself on the screen. Uh, just for security purposes and all that. Now we look into this Explorer. Uh, they have also put the center consoles in here as well. Uh, a little bit of change with the, the dials and stuff, but basically unless you're really looking for screen accuracy, you're not gonna notice these things. It's pretty, it pretty much does the job. And of course we have custom half height seat chairs to recreate that scene where Laura Dern turns around and does the chaos effect on the hand. Also, in the Mattel car, they've done as well, which is a really nice touch. At this point, we talk about the boot. However, in Mattel's Explorer version, uh, they didn't bother modeling the boots, so uh, we'll just skip past that. As well as the back of the car, with these, the weird black vent, I don't know what it was supposed to be used for, but that also appears, if not see-through, on Mattel's Explorer. Oh, and how could I forget, of course, the console. So, this is the actual uh, TV, or you know, the, the make, the brand that was used. And if you look here, this baby was one of the hardest monitors to find. And I didn't realize that the company that was gonna do this was gonna gut it completely. So we, I do still have all the parts and in a perfect world, I'd love to actually make it, you know, work. Also, if you look above you, you've got a beautiful view. However, when it's very sunny, it gets incredibly hot in here. But as you can see, it's a little bit louder 
than um, John Hallam's electric versions. Unfortunately there, dear. And this concludes our review of Mattel versus the kind of screen accurate but not used in the movie, Jurassic Park Explorer. Back to you in the studio, team. Whoa! There we go, eh? So that is the comparison between the Kenner, the Mattel, and the real one. It's inaccurate. And even though it has the missile thing, it has nothing to do with the movie. Mm. And it just felt like all this time you always say, we just want things from the movie. We need things from the movie. <laughs> they finally give it to you and you complain that it doesn't have a <laughs> missile launcher. Yeah, true. <laughs> Well, I think there's definitely a fine balance between screen accurate and fun when it comes to a toy. From there, they're pretty much the same. I mean, yeah, of course, this one, and like I said, you've got 30 years difference of toy manufacture here. But then you've got the fun bit at the back. Oh, no, no. no party in the back. Business in the front, party in the back. You get it! That is Kenna! This good, this also good. Both good, end of video. All in all, Mattel have done an amazing playset. You not only do you get the Explorer with this collapsible little roof that you can do the action feature with, you get the T-Rex as well. So honestly, you just need to buy two of these side by side like that and they can go on the tour together and look great there. So that is going to have to wrap with the video. Good God, it's been a long one. I don't know how I'm editing this, but it's probably been a long one for you guys too. Mattel have done an amazing job with it. I just can't stop singing its praises. So if you've enjoyed this video, leave a like. Let me know in the comments down below. Is there anything that they could have improved on or is it just tip top? Or is it 10 out of 10? I don't know. You let me know. And until next time, I'll see you cutie beaver baby. Babies later. Bye bye. Ow! Ah! What are you <laughs> out yet? You still recording? Are you still? Are you still recording? <laughs>